from our pastor. Please let it go to our hearts and minds. And please be with those who can't be here today because of health and safety reasons. Let them know that you are with them and that we are with them in spirit as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Let everybody stand and we'll uh, open services up with the song. Amen. Oh, 
Thank God Brenda getting all of them round up this morning. Do you want to sing with that? We're going to give this a shot with no music. That's kind of scary. <laughs> Public defender, he might have uh, looked at us and said, "We need an attorney to defend us." 
also say I'm thankful this morning that uh, in the state of everything uh, with the world right now and with the, the coronavirus that uh, everybody here and, and most of the people in my life have weathered it relatively well. Um, I pray and I ask that the church continues to pray for everyone that has been touched by it. I think everybody um, knows at least one person who has either suffered seriously from it, either from health consequences, uh, losing somebody in their family or friends, or on the other side of it, from having financial troubles with everything uh, that it's caused around it. So I know we've all been touched for that, uh, by that, and I'm very thankful that we're still able to come together here and that we have such a small congregation that we can still gather and celebrate Christmas Amen. without having too much of a risk of spreading it as if we were in uh, some church with a thousand people at the feast. So I'm thankful for that. Anybody else have any testimony they'd like to share this morning? With that, I'll uh, turn it over to our. Okay, pastor. Clint, wait a minute and read. Matthew, the second chapter. Second chapter of Matthew. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And now Bethlehem and the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation, and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel, weeping for her children, would not be comforted, because they are not. 
But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel. For they are dead, which sought your child's, your child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Clint. Matthew records there in the second chapter the history of the Redeemer of the world. Many people today would think that it was a myth. I'm going to be preaching on that in a couple of weeks, the myth of Christmas. Because we're loaded down with myths today. We don't know what to believe nor who to believe. Now the Bible tells us that wise men came from the east. Now the wise men in that day out of Babylon, they were the Magi, the astrologers, the scientists, and the medium, the fortune tellers. Now this was a science in the fact that they lived by it, worked by it, and they looked for the coming of the Messiah. The wise men came from the east to Jerusalem. They went Babylon. They came to Jerusalem because they saw a star. It's amazing how many people have lived their lives by astrology, by the guiding of the stars. Astrology is one of the oldest science, and they call it a science because it can repeat itself. And they moved and operated their entire life by what the astrologers declared. One well, few years ago, they'll the First Lady of the United States, Nancy Reagan. She had her own personal astrologist, very well known, and consulted with her every day to see what she was going to do that day. Now, the stars give us a history. According to the Magi, the astrologers, the magicians, and those that came all the way into Jerusalem. And they had treasures with them, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. My wife and I have had the privilege of being in all those places it's talking about. And whenever they came following a star, Numbers, the 24th chapter, Numbers, the 24th chapter, At 24th chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Boar, as said, and a man whose eyes are open as said, he has said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, we saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes wide open. This is what he said, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab 
and destroy all the children of Seth. And Edom shall be a possession, Sire shall also be a possession of his enemies, and the possession of his enemies Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and destroy him that remaineth of the city. The prophets declared were that the Messiah was going to be born, and how that he is going to dominate as a king, not simply of the Jews, as Herod asked him, but king of the world. He is king of kings and lord of lords. Now the Bible is very explicit on all of these things that are going to take place. They didn't take place immediately. Some were hundred years before the prophecy was fulfilled. Some were thousands of years. And some of the prophecies are being fulfilled in the day and the hour that we live in. If you remember that in 1948, May of 1948, a people that had no homeland for over 2,000 years, the Hebrews, the Jews, they were wanderers, they were enslaved, they were in bondage all over the world. But the prophet said they were going to be gathered back into a little strip of land on the Mediterranean Sea, and they were going to inherit this ground. Harry S. Truman restored Israel to its homeland in May of 1948. Israel became a nation under the decree of Harry S. Truman. And the book says here, there is going to be a star out of Jacob. Now Jacob was one of Isaac's sons. And he was a surplanter because he had accepted, the Bible said he stole the birthright of, of Esau, his twin brother. But it wasn't actually to what it says or what it did. Esau despised his birthright and sold him to his twin brother Jacob over a bowl of chili, deer meat made in stew. He was famished. He said, I'm hungry. I need something to eat. And he sold his birthright. He despised his birthright. Many Americans today don't have the knowledge or the understanding of their birthright. They didn't establish it. They didn't fight for it. And they don't understand the birthright of what it means to be a free American. We need to thank God this morning, not only for the Bible I'm reading from that gives us instruction and direction, but we need to thank God this morning for the Constitution of the United States that overrides all of the ambitions of man in his control. It said here that a star shall come out of Jacob. Jacob, his name was changed from the word that means surplanter or heel catcher, his name was changed to Israel. And Israel became the father of 12 tribes. And today, just think about it, in the world that we're living in, several hundred years later, the star out of Jacob, out of Israel, the descendants are still struggling with each other. Esau and Jacob are still struggling with each other. 2,000 years later, the Bible said it was going to happen. And Israel was going to be captive, held captive under Gentile domination until the entire that stroke didn't have me at all. Until the end of the Gentile dispensation. The end of the, dis the, end of the Gentile dispensation came in May 1948. That's history that we know. 
Now the Bible projected that over 2,000 years said Israel is going to return back to this little strip of ground by the Mediterranean Sea and is going to be made a nation overnight. So whenever Israel started migrating back into Israel, it started actually in 1929, but in May of 1948, they hoisted the flag of the Long Star of David. And what does that mean? And what should that mean to us? It means that we can understand and accept the accurate prophecy of the Bible. Not the prophets that on television and on the radio today predicting all this nonsense that's going on that's causing such an upheaval in the United States, but the accurate prophecy of what the Bible declared. The Bible said in the last days, there are going to be lying prophets. I'll talk about that two weeks from now. Out of Jacob shall the star come, and the wise men followed it over to Jerusalem. Uh, now you'll have to excuse me because I don't remember, but tonight, around 10 o'clock, there are going to be two satellite stars that are going to meet together, and it doesn't happen but ever 100 years or so. It's going to create one great light. My Musio said that it's going to be looking like a gigantic star. Now, a lot of people believe that this is what happened whenever the star shined over Bethlehem. I'm not sure whether that's what it is or not, but I do know that the star came out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Now the scepter is uh, uh, a uh, rod that uh, the emperor, the, the, the king, has an image on top of eagle or whatever, and it's a sign of authority. The Bible said that Jacob was going to come out of a star and Israel was going to be the authority of the ruler. Now, here we've got one of the stories that I uh, preached about a lot of times in the 70 some odd years I've been trying to do this. But it talks about Balaam and Balak. Now Balak was a king. He was over an area of ground and, and a province and, and he had great power. Balaam's angry was kindled against Balaam. Balak's angry was kindled against Balaam and he smote his hand together and Balak said unto Balaam, I call thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Now Balak was the kind of individual that these false prophets on radio and television today that have got religion so confused we don't know whether to walk in the light or just walk in the darkness. Because Balak was paying the prophets to prophesy false prophecy. Big bunch of books have been written about this year, but the false prophecy. And so Balak, whenever he got Balaam, oh Balaam with his eyes wide open said, I'm willing to prophesy whatever you're willing to pay me for. And these prophets on television and radio that have got to, uh, million dollar homes and they've got the, uh, uh, supersonic jets to fly around with. They're making merchandise out of God's people. They're robbing the children of God because the children of God have got eyes and can't see, have got ears and can't hear. The old Balak, he got a little bit upset 
at uh, Balaam and they will come on up here on that mountaintop here and, and take a look at Israel that, that they're just scattered everywhere that, that they're multiplying and growing I've got to do something about them and there was a donkey that Balaam was riding and he was going up beside this mountain and the old donkey stopped and Balaam got off and hit him a couple of times with a stick. And the Bible said the ass spoke to Balaam and said, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to tell you that you're doing the wrong thing. I'm trying to save your life. That's what the mule told the donkey. I don't know the donkey yet. Told Balaam. We got a lot of donkeys that are out there telling you whatever you want to hear, mostly nonsense, confusion. And every time that old Balaam would try to prophesy against Israel, Israel would be blessed abundantly until old Balaam made a prophecy and his eyes were wide open. He was in a trance. And he said, I can't go beyond what God's word says. I can't exceed what God's word says. And that's where that you can tell the difference between a true prophet and a false prophet of the day. And because the Bible is a completed book. It said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and in the book of Revelation it says the end. And it said that we are not to add to nor take from what God's word has declared. Now we might not want to believe it. We might think that we're so educated and so advanced that the Bible is a book uh, of antiquity so far back that we don't need it. I got news for you. It's way ahead of us. It is way ahead of us and trying to enlighten us and tell us that our journey on earth is going to come to an end and we're going to be like Balaam. We're going to meet God and he is going to ask us, did you hear my word? Are we willing to follow the prophets of Balaam? But the star appeared And old Balak, king of the Moab, number 22.7. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed in the rewards of divination. Of divination, another witchcraft mysteries. Now see that our own genetic makeup, mental makeup, gives us open to mysticism. If, if we're not very careful, we go to believe in what fortune tellers tell you. Now fortune teller, when you go to fortune teller, give them five dollars. Uh, uh, there's one individual on television, a preacher, uh, that, that he has got a $69 blessing, he's got a $129 blessing, uh, he's got a $500 blessing, depending on how big a blessing you want. I got news for you. He's a lying prophet. Amen. But millions of people are following lying prophets in America today. They don't know the difference between light and dark. The children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side of Jordan by Jericho. And Balak the son of Zephyr saw all that Israel had done to the Amorite. And Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many and Moab was dismissed a, a distress because of the children of Israel. The whole world today is distressed because of the children of Israel. 
not so just the coronavirus, and hopefully the scientists have come up with a couple of shots that uh, we get a couple of shots and they can protect you from it. Some people say, well, I'm not going to take it. Help yourself. Amen. You got to make a choice in life what you want. But here it said, and Moab said unto the elders of Medea, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, and the ox lick up the grass of the field, and Balak the son of Zephor was king of the Moabites at that time, and he sent messengers to <coughs> their fun to Balaam, the son of Borah, Petro, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call them, said, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide only against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse this people, for they are too mighty for me. Free adventure. <coughs> I shall prevail. <coughs> I shall prevail that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I walk that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and whom thou cursest is cursed. Balak said, Balaam, you've got this mystical power, spiritual power, that whoever you bless is blessed, whoever you curse is cursed. Think about it now, where we're at in the world that we're living in. Israel has inhabited, inhabited their homeland, prosperous. We were from one end of Israel to the other, up in Sinai Peninsula. They've got gardens that look like a garden of Eden. They've got land that is producing magnificently. Just think about it. I mean, they came out of over 2,000 years of slavery and bondage because God said before the end of the world, he was going to restore Israel back into their homeland. That's a pretty good sign that the Bible is accurate. Pretty good sign that what the prophet said in the Bible is true. Scripture said, if a prophet makes a prophecy and it doesn't come to pass, they're a false prophet. I left to go through those radio broadcasts. They've got books out and their books didn't hold up, their prophetic fall out apart. Man, they went to scrambling for all kind of uh, uh, answers. I mean, now, now they got the world coming in in, 19, in 2025. They're making a difference. They'll come up with something else. And people will send them or their hard-earned money because they make merchandise out of God's people. I'm talking about that two weeks from today. Listen to what the Bible said. There is no enchantment or divination. Number 23. 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. These are, is there any divination against Israel? According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel what God hath wrought. What has been said of Jacob and Israel is... And uh, they asked me if I wanted to go out and observe the dance of Diabolus. And they uh, go to this enchantment and beating drums and ringing bells and carrying on. And after an hour or two, they're on the ground wiggling and just like snakes the dance of the elbows. There is a spirit in the world that's called the spirit of divination and the spirit of the devil. Jesus called it a lion spirit. Now listen to what the Bible said. 
There is no curse. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse him at all or bless him at all. And Balaam answered and said unto Balak, Told not I thee saying all that the Lord speaketh? That I must do. I mean, just, just saying, he's crying. He, he's going to lose his airplane. He's going to lose his multi-million dollar house in Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas is absolutely loaded. I mean, you, you drive down the uh, summer, and I've been there just uh, here a while back, and, and they've got huge churches and huge mansions and, and huge uh, 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 airplanes and flying around telling people that which is not true. Amen. The Bible didn't tell us to go out and try to make a fortune. It said go and preach this gospel to the ends of the earth. Now, old Balak came to conclusion and said Balaam is not able to curse these people because God has blessed them. Through all of the ages of time, God has blessed the nation of Israel. And the Bible said that God will bless the nation that blesses Israel. We think that means some kind of a political agreement. Not what it's talking about. It's acknowledging the fact that God has made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the star is coming out of Jacob and a scepter out of Israel. Number 23, 23, I'll find it in a minute. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to at this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what God has wrought. Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift himself up as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse him at all nor bless him at all. Balaam answered and said unto Balak, Told not I, saying all that the Lord speaketh that I must do. He was willing to try. You can't go against God. If, if, if you will accept God in your life uh, and live for him, you're going to go through difficulties, you're going to go through darkness, uh, you're going to go through trials, uh, but there's one thing about it, he is never going to leave you nor forsake you. Even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. First Corinthians, the 10th chapter, in the 19th verse, First Corinthians, the 10th chapter, in the 19th verse. What say I then? That this idol is anything? And that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? Well, what can I say then? I mean, to the, to the darkness that has come upon the generations of this age and of this hour. Glory to God. Genesis 49, 1 and 2. Genesis, the 49th chapter. Verses 1 and 2. Jacob called under his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. 
And this is Moses writing, telling what Jacob called his sons together, his descendants, his heritage, and said, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to you in the last days. Not a lot of phony baloney, but I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in the last days. And Balaam finally said, what God said he was going to do, he's going to do it. And we've got signs and wonders that display the fact that the word of God is true. That I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear you, sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. He's telling us what's going to happen in the last days. We're in a day of darkness. We're in a day of confusion. We got a little light now in the coronavirus situation over the scientists. It wasn't some miraculous prophetic preacher. It wasn't some dumb. Oh, I started to use uh, what Balaam was writing on, but <laughs> politician. But it was scientists that have devoted and given their lives to understanding what's happened in nature. But we're not listening to the ones that tell us that we are living in an age and in a time that we're going to pay the price for polluting the water, the air, and the environment. You don't have to believe it. It's taking place in our day and our hour, and we're so blind we can't see it. And we're so religious, we listen to somebody say, well, there's going to be a rapture that's going to take place and take us out before it happens. You better get your flying bridges on because it's happening. It's taking place. Let's know what the Bible said. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in the last day. The night of the tenth verse. Judah is a lion's wealth. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He counts as a lion, as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. That's the Messiah. Until a Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his foul, uh, binding his uh, foal under the vine, and his ass's coat under the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood. You know what the Bible said? That the star that the wise men followed, it's a prediction that's been made over 2,000 years ago. Glory to God. Israel the ninth chapter and the eighth verse. Uh, Israel, Isaiah ninth chapter and the eighth verse. That last stroke didn't help me at all. I'm trying to keep time for you. The Lord sent a word unto Jacob and it lighted upon Israel. The Lord sent a word to Jacob. That's amazing that the wise men that made this long trip bringing gold, frankincense, and myrrh and they went into Herod domain and said, we want to know where the king of the Jews is going to be born at. 
And they told him the word of God says, the prophet declared he's going to be born in Nazareth. Isaiah 9, Isaiah 9 and 8, the Lord sent a word unto Jacob and uh, hath lighted upon Israel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in their heart and standeth of bright heart, the bricks are falling down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them unto cedars. The rabbi sold, I think, 50, 20 million books on using that scripture and said that meant the skyscrapers, the Twin Towers in New York. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall divide Israel with open mouth for all this. His angel, uh, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hope. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail branch and rush in one day. Ancient honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teaches lies. The prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. We cut off in one day. What happened? This is the sixth verse. For unto us a child is born. The only hope the world has that we are going to come out of darkness and see the star of Jacob and the scepter of Israel and realize and understand that as the children used to sing in this church, he's got the whole world in his hand. Everything seems to be out of control. Everything seems to be in a disastrous situation. But see, God has already told Jacob and Israel what is going to happen in the last days, what's going to take place whenever you're no longer under Gentile domination, but you become a strong, powerful light in the world. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The world is talking about Christmas. Christmas was started somewhere around the 16th century. The Roman Catholic Church pre-started Christmas, which means Christ Mass. Santa Claus came from that part of the country. And we have today Christmas around the world. What does it mean? It means my wife works 24 hours a day trying to wrap up a bunch of gifts. Uh, the kids are going open up and uh, two or three days later, no one cares where they're, at, where, where they're at or where they came from. But Christmas is to be an opportunity to recognize that God has spoken unto Jacob and unto Israel that what he said was going to come to pass is going to happen. The Lord sent a word unto Jacob and it lighted it upon Israel. They're going through Hanukkah today. They're celebrating Hanukkah, the uh, lights, the state lit. Sally and I were on top of Masada. That's where the, the 
escaped the death of being taken in Israel and went up Roman soldiers kept them isolated, abandoned. Israel has survived as a nation because God said it was going to be. Now the star of Jacob and the scepter of Israel is what we have hope in today. 2 Kings, the 19th chapter. The 30th and 31st verse. And the remnant that has escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit work upward. Glory to God. Uh, th th these are prophecies that have taken place in not some of you young people, but some of us old people in our lifetime. I remember May 1948, whenever it was declared that Israel is now a state uh, and flying the flag of David, the star of David, there was rejoicing among the Christian church that believed it. Today they have made it such a political. I won't go there. And the remnant that is escaped in the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. In other words, the, the, the nation is still there. We were at the Dead Sea and my wife was over uh, washing her jewelry to Chef Anderson and sold her some bad stuff. If your jewelry goes in there and if it's not pure gold, it turns green. You know? And I sat there with a New York businessman that had migrated back to Israel, sold his business, migrated back to Israel, said he didn't know why, but said it was something drawing him back to Israel. Glory to God. All over the world, they've been drawn back by millions. The root is still in the ground. God's word is still true. Let's know what it says. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Hallelujah. The zeal of the Lord of hosts. Balaam said, I can't curse them because God's blessing them. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Matthew, the second chapter. Matthew, the second chapter. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Now when Jesus was born, this is the Christmas story. Oh, it excites us, you know, whenever we bring our little children around and Showing a snow train and the Christmas trees and all of the apparatuses of Christmas. But see, this, this really did happen. Jesus was really born. You say, how do you know? I know because the Bible told me so. 
And I know that when we were in Jerusalem over Nazareth, uh, uh, our guide said, now this is where people think Jesus was born. Well, Micah the prophet said hundreds of years before he was born, said this is where he's going to be born. Fifth verse, and he said unto him, Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet. And now Bethlehem in the land of Judea, not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Not going to be a Democrat or Republican or Independent. The king of the Jews. Where was he born? He was born in Jerusalem. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. In other words, we have a choice. We, we can either go along with our own agenda, or we can accept what Balaam said. When he declared unto Balak what God said, he's going to do it, and you're not going to change it. Now, Balaam wished that he would because he wanted the gold, the silver that, that, that Balak had offered him to make this prophecy, but God said it's not going to be so. And the little donkey told him, Amazing how that God spoke to us through animals when he used a rooster to speak to old Peter. Glory to God. Then was he the born king of the Jews? Herod asked him after he was betrayed and brought into the judgment room. Herod asked him, said, Art thou the king of the Jews? He said, you say so. But he's not coming back as king of the Jews. He's coming back as king of kings and lord of lords. He's coming back as king of kings and lord of lords. I got nine more hours of this. I'm going to quit. Revelation, the 22nd chapter, and the 16th verse. Revelation, the 22nd chapter. Easy to find, it's the last one in the book. Let me read a little more than the 16th verse. Start with the 12th part. <coughs> Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according to as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to eat of the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city, without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come. 
And let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Listen to this next verse. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and with the things which are written in the book. The world's full of Balaam prophets that prophesy for money, that prophesy to people that have tingling ears and want satisfaction immediately instead of believing and accepting what God said was going to happen, going to take place. Take a place in our day, in our hour, in our time. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. We thank you that your word is a light under our pathway and a lamp under our feet. Help us to receive it today in this day of darkness that we might be able to find help and hope in a time of trouble. In Jesus' name, amen. I appreciate all of you that faced the fog and made it this morning to church. We have somebody to come up to collect this morning's tithe and offering. today. Please bless over those that have to give and those that have not to be like this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I know we're celebrating uh, at least one birthday today. Are there any others? Our pastor, Reverend Wayne Montgomery, is celebrating 88? What? 88 years today. That couldn't possibly be that old. 88 years. 88 years old. That's old. Please uh, join me in singing happy birthday to our pastor.
and we hope that he has served you well in doing so. We ask, Lord, that you bless him with years to come, that you keep him healthy, and that you keep him fit and able to continue to share your message and to share the gospel with us here in this church and with countless others. We thank you for everything that you have blessed us with as a church in the person of Wayne Montgomery. We thank you for his life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Ken. All right, we had a birthday, too. That's what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Looks like three we cents. have another birthday. We had a dig for three cents for the little nugget over there, Riley. All right. Looks like Riley is turning three, so let's sing happy birthday again to Riley. Linda? church to our pastors. Do you want to read it? You see how well trained he is. He may be giving it to you. I'll pick the right one. When the church is blessed, when they have a pastor who worships in spirit and truth, encourages with insightful words and loves from a compassionate heart. So thankful for ways you shine God's light and love. May he refresh you with his peace, love, and joy in this wonderful season. Blessing us with the beloved members of the community, the Christ Community Church. And there's a check in here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate every one of you. Thank I don't you know if to heard you. our pastors, Wayne and Sally. They said this uh, earlier this morning in my testimony. I'm thankful that I was raised up here. And I know everyone else here is thankful too for um, all the ways in which Wayne and Sally have touched our lives. So thank you very much. <coughs> Before you dismiss, let's sing Silent Night, the first of the last verses. Okay. I think I'm going to need somebody else to lead. <laughs> she wants to make sure that we have a little bit of Christmas here this morning.
trouble following directions. <laughs> and I have a prayer request. We had a new baby born on the 15th, and he's in trouble, and he needs lots of prayers. Any other prayer requests this morning? Like I said earlier, uh, I know all of us have been touched in one way or another uh, by what's happening in our world right now. I ask everybody to continue to pray for everyone who is on the front lines as healthcare workers, um, taking care of the people most at risk. Pray for our government leaders. Uh, that they help to get things on track the best they can. Pray for everyone who's uh, suffering from health problems and also from uh, financial problems. Any other prayer requests this morning? 54 million Americans are going with less food than they said they need. A great number of them are going to be removed from their homes before the first of the year. So there is a great need out there. And the Bible tells us that we'll remember them in prayer and in substance. Remember Bobby, too. He's still recovering. All right, Nicole, please stand. And if somebody wants to start us off.